The nation holds its breath. Yes, we're there! Welcome to the Green Machine Podcast. This is Nick and Martin here with our boys in green after a few weeks off, Martin. We took our Christmas holidays early this year, but uh, late last night we realized that there were actually uh, championship matches uh, being played during the World Cup. So we've no choice but to come back, but but without David, thankfully. So it's it's probably going to be a little bit cleaner tonight. Yeah, there'll be less F-bombs and C-bombs thrown around, I think. But yeah, good to be back. Good to see you. I know. Yeah, I miss you, Martin. <laughs> I missed you. I didn't miss David at all. David's actually no, no. stranded, isn't he? He's stranded in London in, in the snow. Yeah. Um, so he couldn't record. I mean, if he really loved us, he would have made, uh, you know, alternative travel plans. But he doesn't love you, listeners. No. We do. Martin and I love you. <laughs> Martin and I love you. And and we're going to bring you probably the, the last Our Boys in Green of the year. How does that feel, Martin? It does feel strange. And it's a great concept, I think. We've enjoyed doing it, covering all the players and goals and O'Dowder assists. It's been plentiful. Yeah, clean sheets. <laughs> I mean, clean sheets have been key, haven't they? I mean, we'll take everything, really, won't we? Yeah, we will at the moment. And it's, it's good to be back, isn't it? It's good to look. Our players, a lot of them play on a championship level. So it's it's good to see them back in action. It seems a long time ago. And fair play to the Irish team for boycotting the World Cup. I know. Yeah, yeah. We, we've done our bit, haven't we? It's yeah. funny because we're, we're, we're going to talk a little bit England later because, you know, they're living rent free in our head. But it's it's important to kind of uh, to chat about them because it is a little bit relevant in terms of a few bits that popped up in Irish news during the week, isn't it, Martin? So yeah. we are going to run through the, the updates. Of course, they're all from the championship. There's still no Premier League. Surprise, surprise. And um, we're, we're going to bring you a little bit of League One because uh, we are scraping the barrel. So. As always, if you're joining us for the first time, um, so the way that our boys in green works is that we bring you the latest Irish football stats over the weekend um, in terms of how the Irish internationals got on for their clubs and how the Irish players on the fringes of the national team got on for their clubs. So uh, quite a few in action. Uh, we'll, we'll try and get through as many as we can, more so the guys who uh, got some goals and assists. So starting off in the championship in terms of goals, so Chidozi Ogbeni, Scoring for Rotherham United, they lost 3-1 to Bristol City. So Max O'Leary, who's had a couple of call-ups in the past, he was in goal for Bristol. And Will Keane, he's kind of our second top goal scorer um, in England at the moment, Martin. He scored a goal for Wigan. They drew one all with Millwall, who had Danny McNamara playing for them. And of course, James McLean playing for Wigan, who uh, I don't know if you saw, Martin, but he, he challenged a few Millwall lads to a fight. I've seen a bit of that, yes. Yeah, it's typical. Yeah. Um, James McLean's not had a day off, has he? So he's still he's still fighting their corner for the Irish movement. I kind of always thought he'd end up at a, a Millwall McLean. You know that that kind of player, perfect yeah. kind of match for it, isn't he? But uh, no, he was he was looking for scraps at the weekend. I would like to have seen that. I would <laughs> like I would like to come up against James McLean. He's he's fairly shredded. Yeah, he is. Yeah, incredibly fit, isn't he? You see him doing his boxing workouts as well. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with him. Never know. Could go into boxing when he eventually retires, whenever that is. And um, look, Martin, we have to touch on a, a very important match for you for, for a number of reasons. And that was at the Cardiff City Stadium. So Cardiff City drawing two all with Stoke City. And there's two reasons, Martin, why, why this is very important for you. So in terms of the Irish involvement, Callum Robinson did score for Cardiff. And Liam DeLapp, of course, the son of Rory, he did score for Stoke City. Um, not only was Jack Bonham in goal, Martin, which I'm sure you knew, uh, for Stoke mm. City, but with two players very close to your heart, uh, Colm O'Dowda, can he claim the secondary assist for for Robinson? Do you think? Definitely can. I mean, you know, I get sticked, don't I, for for yeah, following right, O'Dowda and, and, and rightly going on so, the yeah. But uh, oh, brilliant! That was the interception there and bringing it out. That's what I want to see further up the pitch, obviously for Ireland. But yeah, fantastic! I thought it was good. I, I, I kind of noted to all of you that you need to take notice of that little interception and the drive forward into midfield, and then. The creativity, fantastic. And did you run out of Kleenex after that one, Martin? No, I didn't, no. I was saving that. Uh, obviously, Cousin William played as well. Great I to know, see. I know. That's that's what I... I see, Martin, I wasn't even going to go on about this, but I am going to have <laughs> my own way in a minute. I am going to have my own way in a minute. But yeah, Cousin William, so just any any new listeners, uh, Will Smallbone is apparently Martin's cousin. He did verify for that for you, didn't he? 
he did. Well, when yeah. when, when oh, you okay. snuck when you snuck into the players lounge at the last game against, yeah, uh, basically against them um, against Norway, yeah. So cousin William and then Callum Adeuda, who um who Martin has a a bit of a horn for. So look, I mean, um, a cousin and uh, a kissing cousin, I suppose, really, isn't it? Yep, I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. But look, you had your moment, Martin. Now it's time for my moment. So Sheffield United, uh, they beat Huddersfield Town 1-0 at the weekend. Um, Enda Stevens, John Egan, and who else kept a clean sheet, Martin? That's it. Your man. Your main My man. man. H- Harrow born. Harrow born in London. Kieran Clark. Kieran it's Clark, back. yes. And just any new listeners, like Martin has a horn for Callum O'Dead, I have a serious horn for Kieran Clark, um, <laughs> who, I d- who I thought retired. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, had a, he's had a bad run, but he played the full game, played 90 minutes. Don't think we're going to see him play for Ireland again, but look, yeah. I'll stay hopeful. No one else will. No, I, don't, no. I don't fucking blame them either. Uh, but but one thing that is really worth mentioning, Martin, so Norwich City, they beat Swansea City 1-0 at the weekend. So, of course, we would have had eyes on, on Ryan Manning, who played in the left wing, actually. Played out in the left wing. I mean, he's having a terrific season for Swansea. Can't get in the Ireland squad, but, but you know, playing very, very well there. A number of goals and assists this season. Uh, Michael Obafemi coming off the bench. He's having a bit of a, a slower start to the season compared to last year. But Adam Ida making a comeback uh, for Norwich City and Andrew Mabamadele not far off a comeback. So two of our most promising players, Martin, uh, at Norwich, who are chasing promotion. Um, they, they, they have had a few blips this season, but it's good to see him back, isn't it? I mean, it's important that he gets he gets a run of games and gets back in the Ireland squad. Yeah, I like it on the socials as well that Norwich are talking up to Irish lads coming back. Obviously, key players for them. You know, it's probably impacted him a little bit that Omo Bamadeli, you know, we've been raving about him. We know what he's all about. And he's he's got a really aim for March now to being Stephen Kenny's thoughts and plans. Same as Adam Ida as well, coming back into it. It's great to see. I am I was, I think it'd be intriguing now. I always say this time of year, first week of January, we'll have the FA Cup. And that's normally yeah. an opportunity for them kind of fringe players to get an opportunity for the, um, to get a run for their clubs and remind them what they're all about. Yeah, I think back to Adam Ida's hat trick a couple of years ago against Preston, wasn't it? So yeah. I mean, I mean, he didn't really didn't exactly kick on from there. But look, it's it is a window of opportunity for players to kind of make their mark and, and to kind of break in in the league. So now I think Andrew Mabamadele actually kind of got a bit of game time in the FA Cup before he he broke into the the Norwich team about two years ago when they were in the Championship, didn't he? Didn't he play in the tail end of the Championship yeah. promotion? But look, a very important player, Ida. Plays a little bit more more withdrawn for Norwich, which is interesting. You know, I think he's kind of considered a target man for Stephen Kenny, but he does play that little bit deeper um, at Norwich, which is just a, an interesting observation. Right, so we have to dip into League One because uh, we are clutching the straws. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> again, we only we only realised there was football on last night, but uh, but look, here we are. So, um, as per usual, we're taken to Derby. So they drew one all with Burton Albion. Uh, James Collins with another goal this season. Again, he, he kind of league wise and domestic wise, um, English domestic, not not proper domestic, Martin, <laughs> not proper domestic, not, not Irish domestic, but he he is one of our top scorers, um, at club level. And Connor Harrahan assisting him, um, Jason I replaced Connor Harrahan, um, in midfield. Of course, he was playing right back a lot at the start of the season. Uh, Aaron Cashin, of course, starting for for Derby, he's been excellent for them. I mean, I don't want to go too off topic, Martin, but are you a little bit concerned that Harahan is actually keeping Jason Knight out of the squad at the moment? Because that's exactly think, what it is. Yeah, I, I think, though, that the fact that Knight's played at the back a bit for them and he, yeah. he's kind of stop start with the season with them, you know, the speculation he was going to be going as well. Um, it's it's interesting, you know, Horahan, they know what they're going to get with him. You know, he won't have had a lot of game time since the previous with Ireland and stuff. I know he wasn't in the last squad or anything, but... Well, when he um, set up that Armenian goal... Yeah, but I just think, you know, he he, he would have just set, he settled into that level of club football now where he's going to be playing week in, week out. And and James Collins, it was a quite a clever goal, actually, quite a fin- good finish yeah, from the cross. Finish. And um, that's what he's all about. And that's why he scores goals at that level. But we have to remember that it is at League One level. Yeah, three goals and three assists are higher in this season. But I think context is very key. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, really, Martin, when he was the top assister in the championship. You know, his assist, uh, his assist stats in the championship are outrageous. Um, but 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 it's it's I wouldn't say a sad state of affairs. The night is 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 in playing ahead of him. But I mean, he has been a bit soft start. I think we we were a little bit guilty of overhyping him, as were a lot of Irish outlets. But um, you would hope that maybe Derby do push for promotion and that he does end up back in the championship. But at the moment, um, 
you know, it's probably not not where Stephen Kenny wants him. And, and as Kenny said, Harrahan probably would have been in the in the last Ireland squad despite his uh, big struggles against Armenia. So yeah. just something to keep an eye on. And then one more goal kind of to report in League One before we move on. And that was Warren O'Hara of MK Dons. He scored in the 2-1 loss against Fleetwood Town. Fleetwood crack, we like to call them, when Joey Barton was there. So uh, I suppose the last little stat that, that we want to bring is from the Women's Super League. So Katie McCabe, uh, scoring for Arsenal in their 4-1 win over Aston Villa. And, of course, her partner, uh, Ruisha Littlejohn, actually plays uh, for Aston Villa. She didn't play at the weekend. She's injured, of course, but uh, just an interesting one. I'd say that was um, an unhappy household last night. Yeah, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, Ruisha does some brilliant stuff on YouTube as well, so I'll, I'll be intrigued to see her, her footage from that. Yeah, I don't know. A bit of a, bit of a scrap, I'd say, after that. Yeah, shame, yeah, maybe. shame she wasn't playing. I mean, you've never had on you. You'd wonder if there's any guys in the Premier League or in other leagues who've you know maybe been in a relationship and, and played against each other or whatever. We'll never know them, aren't will we? In terms of the lads, but no. you know, I'm sure it does happen with, with with the girls sometimes. You know, maybe a partner plays against another, and you know, um, certainly no love loss. I'd say, you know, if no. if, if Rusha was playing, yeah. But anyway, they came out came out quite well. We're riding on a bit of a crest of the way. The the Arsenal women's team. And just speaking about the, the Ireland women's team, I suppose, they've achieved their highest ever ranking. They've moved up to 23rd in the world rankings, of course, off the back of their World Cup qualification. Um, Special team, Martin. I mean, they're up for team of the year here with the RT Sport Awards. I think they're eschewing. What do you reckon? Yeah, they have to win that. I mean, look, it's unprecedented that they qualify for the, the World Cup. I was actually chatting to a Scotland fan the other night about Hamden on my visit there. And then I was saying, you know, we played you again in the qualifier for the World Cup. It was an yeah. amazing night if you think back to it. It seems a long time ago now. But, you know, interesting to see how they've they've moved forward. I know Vera Powell's been on uh, the Late Late Show, very confident in how she's talking and preparing for it. They've recently announced as well that Brisbane's going to be their base camp over there. Yeah. So no no mention of going to Saipan. Um, and hopefully we'll have no kind of rows and kicking off. I, I think there's a lot of... Uh, it's going to be very intriguing follow, following the Irish women's team now into the new year. Um, there's going to be a lot of hype about them. They're going to be, you know, getting a lot of publicity, obviously, rightly so. There's going to be, you know, player of the year awards. Yeah. You know, I know Katie McCabe's up for awards as well. And Fira Powell are going to be lauded, but, you know, ultimately got to settle down now in new year, get the preparation right and, and hit that World Cup by storm because fantastic opportunity and the lift it's going to give to... Irish football, you know, in the back of the World Cup, it's nice. I know we're not been in the men's one, but like six months on, we're going to be in the women's one and first yeah. time ever. And it gives a bit of focus to Irish football. I know it's probably going to be a conversation for another time, Martin, but can you see any maybe Irish eligible players coming in? Like, I mean, we spoke about the preparation. We spoke about the hype leading up to it. This is something that's been spoken about just a little bit. It's going to be interesting because I think, you know, it's an opportunity for the women now to to kind of, get in the mindset of Vera Powell if they can be eligible. And she said that, I think, already. So we might have to ask her ourselves if we get the opportunity, Nick. Yeah. Who knows when that might be? <laughs> Could be next week. <laughs> it would be nice. It will be nice. We'll, we'll see anyway. Watch the space. Watch the space is all I'll say. Um, and speaking of Irish eligible players, Martin, I think this is one that that, that is very, very important to speak about, isn't it? You know, because there's, there's no kind of getting away with it. And I mean, I spoke with England living rent free in our heads just a few minutes ago. But I mean, Declan Rice and Jack Grealish, we just can't get away from them. Martin O'Neill's comments midweek. What did you make of them? I was disappointed, wasn't it? I mean, I know he's talking about a book and uh, I got called out on Twitter because I, I have said in the podcast in the past, I brought a book. Um, he only mentions Ireland and he gives it gives Ireland one chapter. Now, I haven't read the book yeah. yet. I haven't really bothered getting into it because I'm trying not to read too much of the kind of previews of it and his, obviously, publicity of it. You know, he's on Twitter now, Martin O'Neill, as well. And like, <laughs> he's quite engaging. He's quite funny with the stuff, isn't he? He's very dry. Not, in, not engaging but... with us, though, was he? No. Let's just see if he replied there. Yeah, ju just yeah. just anyone who isn't aware, um, just on our Twitter. So Martin O'Neill did have a an open Q&A, wasn't it? I mean, he just kind of put a post up, didn't he? And people could re yeah. reply and he will respond uh, we put one up and it got quite a bit of engagement itself, didn't it? Uh, from everyone but Martin O'Neill. And um, I'll, I'll pull it up in a few minutes, but it was basically along the lines of, uh, you know, first of all, congratulating him on the book to try and butter him up. And that didn't really do much good. <laughs> and then what we asked was, um, during your time as Ireland manager, Martin, 
Uh, did you uh, have any Irish eligible players reject you apart from Rice and Grealish? And uh, no, he never replied. So I think that's probably it's either in the book or else it's, it's it's an interview for another day, isn't it? But I think that was kind of telling that he didn't reply. I'm sure there was a few because because he, he did try and get a few, didn't he? You know, when he came in at first, but, um, you know, not not so much, uh, not so much joy either way. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't read the whole book and, and the context of it might be lost. But when I've, I've, I've skipped to the Irish bit, the Irish chapter, and he does only give a chapter to each of his clubs and, and country, obviously. But um, it's it, yeah, he he's just very brief on it. You know, there's not enough in depth. I'd, I'd love to kind of get, you know, like the Mick McCarthy kind of World Cup diary when you hear yeah. the whole ins and outs of everything. You'd, you'd love to hear that. You know, I'd like to hear him kind of, in a way, bite back with the kind of, the kind of fallout with Matt Doherty and things like that, you know, kind of justify some of the challenges he had, you know, even the Stephen Ward fallout, Roy Keane, that kind of stuff. That would be all very, very interesting getting his take on that. Yeah. All he really snipes about is the Irish media and that he never really got rated by them. And it's, it, I think it's telling the players he does mention that they're the ones he actually respected and had time for. And, you know, we know that in his tenure there, he was very condescending and, you know, very negative about some of our players and their attributes, and that that's just very much the similar kind of vein of the of the book. I think, like even Matt Doherty came out kind of just after he was sacked, didn't he? Yeah, and he kind of said there wasn't a huge amount of coaching done by him or Roy Keane. And I mean, I suppose part of the crux of that conversation last week, uh, the Martin O'Neill had was the whole idea that Jack Grealish and uh, Declan Rice. He always anticipated that they play for England. I mean. Yeah. So many different conflicting scenarios have come, kind of come up. Haven't they saying, look, they should have been capped at senior level and brought straight into the senior team. I think Grealish, look, I mean, he was kind of in and out, wasn't he? A kind of uh, underage level. But Rice, I mean, is, is a completely different scenario. They spoke about the whole idea that um, it was after the, the 2018 World Cup that Rice decided he wanted to play for England and that there was umpteen chances for him to be capped by Ireland at competitive level. But... um. <laughs> What do you make of the reaction, Martin? We we put a cheeky little uh, meme up, didn't we, the other day? That's that's gotten quite a bit of engagement, and it's, and it's been nicked by a few people, by the way. And the kind of Brendan Grace uh, meme with uh, Jack Jack Grealish yeah. and Declan Rice. So um, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of mixed uh, feelings coming from Ireland, isn't there? There's some people saying, "Oh, delighted for the traders and all this kind of thing," and then other people are saying, "Why are you even bothered? Why are you even talking about them anymore?" Or what's yeah. your stance on it? That's the difficulty with it. You know, whenever England play, you know, I've seen a lot of England fans reacting, uh, obviously on the back of being knocked out, going like, you're you're worrying, why are you worrying about us? Your team's not even there. And yeah. same with Scotland and Wales and what they've achieved or not achieved. It's a difficult one, the Declan Rice and Greedy thing, because it, it, it still hurts, basically, especially Declan Rice for me. You know, went to the three games as well where he played and fantastic player. And I think that's back to the Martin O'Neill point in a way. It's, it's just disappointing that he, he said he always got the vibe that he was always going to choose England. I think mm -hmm. Martin O'Neill's losing sight of the fact that he picked him three times over like a period of six months or even a year yeah. in different kind of squad call-ups. And if he gets the vibe from the first one, why are you calling him up again? You know, that that's what mm -hmm. we've got to kind of stop now. Um, I don't feel too bad about Grealish. I know he played under 21, but I think he declared early enough with it um, that he wasn't going to be you know, long term with Ireland, but incredible talent, both of them. And it's a difficult one, especially for, uh, I've mentioned it on the podcast before, like but people probably like myself, you know, second generation Irish. Um, we've got, you know, and, and even, I know uh, Ronnie Whelan was getting a bit of stick on it because on, on the commentary that he was kind of being perceived as supporting England. And yeah. even Roy Keane was very pro England on how well they played and everything. And I think we have to remember though, a lot of these Irish lads came over to England. They've made their living here. They've yeah, probably married yeah. into English families. Their kids would class themselves as English. All right. My kids consider themselves Irish, born up, born in London, brought up in London. But, you know, I think a lot of second, third generation would have a lot of uh, interest in England and wanted them to see well, ultimately. And especially the likes of, Declan Rice and Jack Grealish, who are basically kind of almost representative of us, you know, second generation, third generation, getting to the pinnacle of their their sport and going to a World Cup, and you know, it's 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 a massive challenge for them, and it must be very very difficult. It does hurt a little bit when I see Declan Rice talking so glowingly and he's blaring out the anthem now yeah, it is yeah. to his heart's content. But you know, while I always remember, I think we've always got it over him that he he also did it for Ireland. 
I know, I know. And what did you make of the game on Saturday, Martin? Because it's 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 hard, like you know, it's it's hard doing a football podcast, isn't it? Not really talking about the World Cup, but I mean, we we try and keep it as relevant to Ireland as possible. But look, considering there were two ex Ireland internationals playing, we might as well uh, remark on the game. Uh, who were you backing before the game? I mean, I uh, I was back in England. I'm not going to lie. I've got France in my lads' draw. France in my lads' draw. So so I was obviously naturally hoping for France for a number of reasons. Uh, despite the the bitter rivalry that we've developed over the last couple of decades with them, but um, yeah, I, th- I thought England would stifle them. They kind of did stifle them, didn't they? But um, I think France are just one of those teams that can play badly and still get results. That's the key thing, you know. It's always mm-hmm. difficult to be a champion ultimately, and and yeah. that's what they they showed the other night. And they were very clever in their game management. And we're going to have to get used to that. And it is relevant for us to talk about it because we're playing them in the qualifiers coming up. You know, we're going to have the challenge of Griezmann and Mbappe. I just thought Griezmann was brilliant. How he you know, could have been sent off, couldn't he, early on as well? Like he he probably should have so been sent stuck off. In. But what do you think of the just, ref? I didn't think much of him, but I mean, they're just clever and they manipulate it so yeah. well and they manage the, the game so well. And, um, you know, it was just small margins at that level. Uh, and, you know, he could have gone on, like Harry Kane could have been a hero. They could have gone on from that and won. Um, but obviously they didn't. And it, it was interesting. I, I mean, I was saying about, I thought Bellingham kind of had a quiet game, but then you have to remember the player, he was going to be the one who they wanted to stop. It's like Mbappe played in fits and starts, really, yeah. and how well Carl Walker played against him. So, you know, but again, you have to remember they were very close, England, and I was worried if they got through, you know, I, I found I think Morocco are going to be very much like the South Korea of 2002. That's yeah. as far as they'll yeah. go. I think England would have beaten them. Uh, they would have found a way against them because they're going to get more and more confident if they got through. Um, and then it, I think... Uh, I ultimately think Argentina or France are obviously going to win it, but I think I, I wouldn't mind seeing Messi kind of do it now. I know this has upset you with the your Ronaldo fanboy stuff. But... Yeah, I'm very offended. Very offended. <laughs> the, the, what, well, we what we say, what we say is though. called the, the burgundy and green machine now. That's it, yeah. yeah. But the, the lad from Argentina, though, McAllister, isn't it? Yeah, he's from Donna Bay. He's I'm yeah. literally looking I'm looking at Donna Bay as you, you speak. Go. Yeah, so yeah, I, I can claim claim him to fame now. Yeah. You know, it doesn't but, but matter about Ronaldo now. It's been a really good World Cup, though. And I, and I think even back to the Argentina-Holland uh, game, that was always going to fall apart like that. And how well they... I mean, the margins, as I said, you know, and just the little things that happen in the game, even the penalty shootout, it's fascinating now yeah. to look back at the in- exchanges and why Argentina and Holland reacted at the end of the game to it because the games and shit that goes on. Because it's so fine margins for these players. And they're the elite level. And they're, they're ultimately doing a lot of things to be able to win. And... I think I read some interesting stuff like what Ireland need to do. You know, I've, I've, I read a tweet. Someone said, you know, we've got to play quicker. We've got to get fitter. Yeah. I'm not sure about the fitness thing because I think in the context of Irish sporting athletes in a way, you know, I think I messaged us on our group the other night how, you know, for a small country like Croatia, for example, we're at the pinnacle of golf. We're at the pinnacle of horse racing and boxing, even if you think of Katie Taylor. So we can yeah. produce it but we're just so far behind with football at the moment. And the GAA is a factor, of course, but them lads are incredibly fit in a, you know, you know, an amateur game ultimately. So it, it can happen, the structures put in place. And even Morocco, you know, I read today that, you know, it was it was investment from their king or of 12 million pounds. Yeah. I mean, that's in, in hindsight. Well, well, thinking... well, 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 not only that, but I mean, half the team is French and, and Morocco, yeah. or, French and Dutch and Spanish, aren't yeah. they? So, I, I we put a tweet out there a couple of weeks ago, and we we're we we're more or less saying, look, you can exploit the granny rule, and you can complain all you want, but I mean Morocco aren't, you know, Morocco really aren't. I mean, you look at yeah. Ziyech, you look at Hakimi, Hakimi's Spanish, uh, Spanish born, uh, um, Ziyech is is uh, Dutch born, you know, so it just shows that sometimes you need to, uh, I suppose, exploit your resources to the maximum. I mean, look, it, it, it kind of shows that if Rice and Grealish were playing for us, it's almost a similar kind of situation. Because, I mean, the Dutch probably probably would have loved to have had a, a Ziyech in such form that he's in now. And, and you know, Hakimi for the Spanish. I mean, these lads have actually gone a lot further than the countries of their birth, with, with the exception of the French lads. So, you know, it's... it's uh, but, but, but the worrying thing, Martin, I think, you know, watching this World Cup, it is how far behind we are. Because even mm-hmm. if you look at the Australians... And on paper, I'm not just saying it because obviously we support Ireland, but but we should be so much further ahead than Australia. But technically, like they had uh, Rennie Mullenstein coaching them, you know, the ex-United uh, assistant manager and 
you know, technically they're so much more superior. Like we are so, so, so far behind. And I, I know we like to hype the team. I know we like to be positive about the team. But watching this World Cup has been really disheartening because even some of the smaller nations, as I said, even Senegal, I know England ended up thumping them. But seeing how organized the African nations are, the Asian nations are, um, you know, people can say, look, Stephen Kenny's very good tactically and all this kind of thing. And he's got us playing better football. But we're lagging decades behind by the looks of things, I think. I think, yeah, it's a valid point what you're saying there. And I, even Robbie Brady done a great interview recently saying how there are no, you know, useless teams anymore. There's no cannon yeah. fodder in your group. Everyone's technically very, very good, hard to yes, break yeah. down and very organised. And, you know, it's made a good point there about Manstein because, you know, we went with the Dutch model of our director of football. You know, I look at even just how it's set up and how professional these club, these, these team countries are. You know, you look at the Argentina bench, you look at the Dutch bench, yeah. Edgar Davids is on it. You know, massive yeah. name. The referee's looking over at Van Gaal, but he might be getting a few words from Edgar Davids. He's thinking, oh, yeah. God, that's Edgar Davids. It gets in the mindset. That's exactly what the role should have been for Robbie Keane. That's where he should be in that, yeah. in that thing. Our, our back in, backup team or backroom staff isn't high profile enough, I don't think, uh, no. to kind of warrant that. And maybe it's, not, it's, not, it's not experienced enough. And I mean, I mean, if, if you look yeah. at the, I know the Italians are at the yeah. World Cup, but if you look at the Italians in, in Euro 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 exactly. plus one, you know, you had Viali in there, you had. Um, Lombardi. I mean, you yeah. you you had a full backroom team of first of all very very good coaches, but also very very good influences and characters. I mean, That's with Ireland, it's, it's Keith Andrews and Stephen Kenny. Yeah. I mean, look, we're we're not on the train and pitch. The the players speak glowingly, but they have to speak glowingly. Um, I mean, Robbie Keane. Look, I mean, we've we've questioned his coaching credentials. Again, we aren't on the train and pitch, but he is. Um, he is an experienced operator at international level. Yeah. You know, he's seen a lot of things. A lot of those lads happened. And I mean, look, it's it's all cost, isn't it? Because imagine having Damien Duff and Robbie Keane on the on the bench. Okay. And I mean, you've, you've Keane there for, I don't know what, I mean, experience or whatever he can do, that kind of cheerleader role, isn't it? But then Duff had genuine credentials, you know, as a coach. I mean, he was ho- so highly rated as Celtic. Look at what he's done with Shell. So, I mean, and Lee Carsley, I see today, is 25 to 1 to be the next England manager. Hmm. And, and there's no involvement for him within I the FAI. So- I think it's a really massive thing that though now it, it like or every other country seems to have this backroom staff on match day that's big yeah. big profiles you know maybe it's the question could be uh, have we got our ex players are some of them not leaving their egos at the door perhaps that's the question I mean I must say fit, coming on from that you know John O'Shea who I think is going to be a massive massively important person in the future of Irish football you know we, yeah. we know he's with Jim Crawford now getting experience there he's been he's got some club uh, coaching experience as well just got his UEFA pro license I believe it is um under the FAI kind of training scheme uh with UEFA I think he's just going to be so important he's actually studied kind of business models of it and everything yeah I think we need to get him more and more involved now and fast track him in there um because you know, at the end of the day, John O'Shea will be remembered for playing for Man United Champions League finals, winning everything at the highest level. We can always go back to the Figo nutmeg as well, but he's over 100 caps for <laughs> Ireland. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? That's the profile for it. And I, I think that's what has been interesting for this and the development of it. And I do like, I think we maybe are going that way, but it's just, again, we're a little bit far behind. We've got Glenn Whelan, we've got John Walters, even underage stuff, Sean St. Ledger's yeah. in there as well. I think that's fantastic to see. And I think the more of that we do get is going to be the better for Irish football. And um, I think, you know, even the under 19s, I think we've got to remember as well, technically and tactically. And, you know, we're on about second, third generation and qualifying and whoever can play for our team. If you look at the names of our teams who are doing very, very well underage, it's going to take yeah. time, but they're not all, you know, O'Carroll, O'Connell. It's not Irish familiar names anymore. That's just representative of the country we are to this yeah. day. Yeah. And we've got to embrace that now. And that that's it, I think. Absolutely. I mean, we have to maximize our player, but it's it's yeah. the it's the smallest player pool I remember, you know, in, in, in my time following Ireland, 25 odd years and... I can't remember such a such a small and such a limited player pill. So we we have to max it out. You know, we have to max it out. And just because a player declares for Ireland, it doesn't mean that they're going to play for us. Jermaine Pennant declared for Ireland, didn't he? He never yeah. got caught once. So I think I think it just shows, you know, when people dismiss these guys really, really quickly, they have to realize, first of all, they can add a serious dynamic to our team. And second of all, they're not necessarily going to get capped, you know? Um, like I, I know this is mad. This is going to sound like madness, but Nathan Redmond apparently is playing unbelievably for Bajiktas at the moment, and he still qualifies for Ireland. You know, yeah. and, I, and like I'm not saying that a 28 year old kind of journeyman winger at this stage is the answer to all our problems, but I mean, if he was an option, you know, like if if, if he was within our player pool, it's another winger, isn't it? It's another right it's, winger. It's, it's, and... some, it's someone we got to look at. Ultimately, we do, and yeah. and you know. 
we're just too quick to all right, we're probably too quick sometimes to praise. We get carried away like Callum Robinson scores a few goals and we think, oh, brilliant asset for the future. Oba Femi has a great, you know, camp and oh, it's brilliant, fantastic. Um, but you know, like we're too quick the other side then to kind of rule people out. If Troy Parrott, just because he's not playing in the premiership, yeah, the amount of tweets I say see saying he's like finished and oh he's no good and oh well he was hyped up and lads have you know, clearly never ridiculous. seen him like, play and stuff. Yeah. Well, but they don't they'd probably be the same people raving about Harry Kane, who was on loan yeah. at Leicester with Vardy yeah. sitting on the bench, was a bit of a journeyman at one stage, very under, you know, at, at his younger days, couldn't get in teams, couldn't, was was very much in the radar for Ireland as well. And then at one stage, and then he starts bang, banging the goals after he comes back from a loan. And then he's, he's a World Cup top scorer ultimately. Well, it's just... Well, not, it... well, not a very good penalty taker, but, you know... <laughs> Well, it depends what sport you're playing, Martin. I suppose, doesn't it? But like, if you if you look at Irish players, I mean, the, for the first time in a long time, we have low, we have this big influx of teenagers and lads in their early twenties playing first team football, which we haven't had for a long time. And you can understand that that degree of hype. And the other thing you have is that um, you've so many Premier League debutants where where you didn't before. And I think the kind of pattern that there's been for the last 10 years or so is that you might have lads who would start off in the lower leagues. So I use Conor Harrison as an example. He literally went League 2 all the way to the Premier League and then was getting capped by Ireland. You look at Matt Doherty I mean he was playing reserve team football with Bohemians went to Wolves, played reserve team football with Wolves, was in and out of the Wolves team and now he's a Spurs. Um, You know so that Keith Andrews, I mean look going even further back, Keith Andrews is another example, you know, League 2 with MK Dons and then made it to the Premier League. So a lot of our players are they they do kind of bloom late and they do kind of come through the I suppose the the track less taken, but in recent years it's almost the opposite. There are lads coming through Premier League academies. There are lads coming through Championship academies and getting, um, getting game time. I suppose before their time. And then Stephen Kenny is taking a chance on a lot of these lads. That has dried up a little bit, you know. But I think I think that kind of is the difference. But it's um it's it's a long way to go, you know. As I said, like technically even. Um and tactically, like they're, they're, I've said this before, there's nothing revolutionary with what Stephen Kenny is doing, but it's a very, very necessary revamp. But in terms of, as I said, like watching some of those smaller nations, watching Australia and how well they're set up, you know, how organized yeah. they are. And I mean, like they had, you know, they their left back plays for Dundee United, their right back plays for Hearts, their center half plays for Hearts, another center half plays for Stoke, like on paper. And, and uh, what's the name? Matt Ryan is the third choice keeper of Copenhagen. So like on paper, I mean they're 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 definitely not as good as us, but tactically and technically, and the way that they're set up, they're they're miles ahead of us. And I mean their their manager only ever coached in Australia and Japan. Yeah, you know look look at uh Pesinoglu at Celtic. So it, it just shows that you know an a management structure and a good backroom team is very important. At the, at the end of the day. Ours is very inexperienced and doesn't have much there. But I mean, even you know, even on some of those coaches, Martin. I mean, Carsley, as I said, you know, he has to be involved there at some level. And um, Stephen Reid, I know he's taking a bit of a break from football, but someone like him, so so highly rated, Andy Reid as well. Both of them are at Nottingham Forest, and then you Brian Barry Murphy, who's who's a Man City. So the coaches are there. Whether the resources and the money is there to actually bring them in is another question. But, you know, we, we do have the potential to kind of build that, to build that around Stephen Kenny or look even someone else. I mean, as I said, like Lee Carsley, 25 to one to be the next England manager. Um, He, he wasn't even in the running to be Ireland manager when, mm. when, um, when Martin O'Neill left. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about being clever with it and it's about getting the right people in to actually make us a competitive team at international level. But the, but that has been the kind of downfall of this World Cup from an Irish perspective, watching it and just seeing how far we really are behind, which is disappointing, you know. Yeah. But um but look, it's it's well enjoy the rest of it. More so because okay. England are gone now. Um who are you back in to win, Martin? I'd like to see Argentina do it just purely because Messi. I think I like the fact you know, I'm a, a big fan of Ronaldo, of course. Amazing what he's achieved in the game. All right, yeah. Man United hat on now. It's not been great how he left, but, you know, he's a bit narcissistic. And, uh, you know, we've always known that about him, so I'm not going to really knock it for him because that made him the player he is. But I like the way Messi, when he was giving it a little bit the other day, which some people felt a bit was distasteful, you know, calling out Van Gaal, shouting in the press conference and stuff. But he's doing yeah. it for the team, ultimately. And that Argentina are a, a massive team, ultimately. Yeah. And... They they will know the dark arts. They will manage a game really well. They won't panic. They've got undoubtable quality as well. So I, I think it's just written, isn't it? It would be perfect for Qatar if 
the biggest name in the world wins the yeah, world cup and wins it, he yeah. completes a set and i i think it'd be amazing to see saying that though i think france it's incredible when you think how close england came to beating them but france were missing three or four of their starting lineup and that's an achievement in itself as well they're going out on their sword whatever way happen that happens um i, I think morocco have gone as far as they can um and yeah. i think croatia though you know they're not you know amazing to watch but they're very very organized and and Again, it's a sense of kind of regret that you're kind of watching them and thinking with the population. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they're established in 1996, basically, aren't they? And mm-hmm. what they've achieved in that time is incredible. And, you know, it just, it, it, you kind of lament looking back at, you know, our our achievements with Brian Kerr underage and did that team kick on and did them as youth players yeah. kick on and achieve and why didn't we? And another country, similar size population went on and, you know, playing at the top table, basically. So I think Argentina for me, though, to answer yeah. your question, <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go France Croatia repeat, right? And I, I I'm gonna go France, but I'm gonna go France Croatia repeat. I think it's gonna be it would it be the first time the two teams, um, made back to back finals, some something like that. So yeah, that's that's what I'm going for. A strange one, random one, but and that's what I'm tipping. It so could look. be it could be an interesting one of Deschamps if he wins it. Does he step down? And we could be playing two teams, Holland and France, yeah. then with with new managers, you know, new managers, bit of uproar in the camp, hopefully. Um, might be unsettling them. Never know. Thierry Henry is looking for a job now, isn't he? Yeah, you know. But yeah, I'm not not looking forward to that that visit from the French in March. But look, we'll we'll tackle that when it comes ahead. So we're gonna leave it there for tonight. And uh, we were we are we were we <laughs> we we yeah. are gonna be back with a very special episode next week, one that we are recording at the end of this week, and that of course is the Green Machine Awards for 2022 so we did put the votes out to the fans we got some great engagement there martin didn't we so great to see so many people voting for their team of the year uh their players of the year their goal of the year and many many more awards so we will be back with that in the next couple of weeks we are recording it this week and we will have it out i think on stevens day martin or boxing day as you probably call it you know (laughs) <laughs> Captain Racing Day, that's what I call yeah. it. There you go. You, you, <laughs> geez, you won't even be able to remember it uh, when, when, when we release it. But that, that should be the next time we're back. We, I don't anticipate another Boys in Green next week. But look, if we're around Martin, we might get it done. Who knows? We'll give the people what they want. So until then, take care and all the best. Oh,